Mark Savage here. Welcome to my channel. Moped viewers, this is going to be a lovely fest for you. I do appreciate your patience. I know I've done some cars and some big bikes and I've got three sorts of viewers. But today, moped time. And have I got a bit of fun for you. Come on, all your dreams have come true. Speed fight. So let's look at this speed fight. As you can see, this is where the ignition normally goes. And it's normally somewhere like that. And it just sits like that. This is non-immobilised. So the mobiliser would be under here. This is normally where your dog isn't. Up there on the dog, she's not deaf, got dementia. She's forgetting to hear. Daft old smelly thing. Anyway, this is normally where the dog isn't. This is normally the coil. The static coil I keep on about. This does your electrics for your timing. Stop sniffing dog. For your timing and for your electrics, the powerhouse. I think you can see uh, this had slight piston problems. Dog. I think you can see this had slight piston problems. That is smashed to hell. And if you ever see a piston, that's scoring. Can you see that scoring there? That's oil problems. And the rest of the crap's going to be down there. Big ends, small ends. Small ends are here, big ends are here. These are your rings. This is the carburetor. I've done many videos on the carburetor. Watch them. They will get all the bits and bobs done. Reeds are under here. Variator, I've done it many times before. Variator, clutch, probably actually come off, and the belt's in there. This is the first link pipe with the airbox, and the other airbox goes here. Rear suspension, bolt, other bolt up there. This is the oil pipe that goes to the oil. Pump under here, and leads back again. It's quite a size down on this one, that's something, I guess. The usual rear lock, a bit knackered. Top won't come up, so I'm gonna have to get my fingers in there and pull that. Clocks, simple. Obviously been battered, not good. This is what some of you guys do sometimes, rather than undoing the one, two, three, four bolts and it comes up easy. These often move. No headlight, but hey, there you go. And is the front end twisted? Mm, a little bit. Remember, these are single shock bikes. It's a very brief look at a Peugeot Speed Fight, but there is 70 videos on this thing where the battery goes, why your lights don't work, indicators, bleeding brakes. I don't mean bleeding, bleeding, but you know what I mean. Front shock, what goes wrong with them, how to fix them. Let's move on. Air rocks. Yeah, my hot air rocks, or what's left of it. Front suspension. You get to see the headstock. I've done many videos on this. Lift that one up, put them two back down again, and put it down. I'll explain what goes wrong with that. This one's fine, actually. Front suspension, you can't do anything but replace it if it goes. If it's an MOT failure, there's nothing you can do. Front brake, nice and simple on these. Disc can get very thin. Good tread on the tyres. Ignition, done a video on ignition. Same as a speed fight, same basics on here as well. But this one's a bit easier to get off. But again, snap bolt on this one is actually still there. This is what you snap off when you actually put a lock on. I wouldn't snap them off just to readjust them. On this side bit here is to do your seat, click it open and closed. This is a needle that goes in the carburetor. Take good care of this. If it's bent, sometimes you put your adjusting screw in here, put it and you can push it in and out. Not good really. This ignition's alright, I've got keys. Clocks, nice and simple. Bit of a bugger to get off, do this one, click it off. Front and rear reservoir. This is brake, disc back and front. <laughs> no handles either side though. Obviously petrol, water cooled, rear disc brakes. Single shock at the back. Da da, very active system. Clutch. I've done again a video on how this works, big and small. And there, someone asked me recently about the start system. This is sort of a, a pressure sort of system with little weights on that actually gets to start it. But your starter motor is easy to find on this one. Very easy to find. I've done a video on the starter motor process, literally from ah, where the brake lever isn't. It's a micro switch, it goes along under here to your relay, to the battery, to the starter. This will get videos saying um, it won't kick start, it won't electric start, it just clicks, doesn't click. Watch the video, really helpful. But again, not in too bad a condition, it's on the wonk, that's because of the stand. Has got a centre stand. I find air are great little bikes, you can jack them up, side stand them, lots of bits and bobs, and they are quite fast. 
And then the corner, Gilero Runner. And the Gilero Runner, well, what's left of it? These are fast bikes. Missing pieces, obviously. Mm. Good to see antifreeze in these. Do not put plain water in them. So right in the summer, you keep the bike, winter, it expands, head goes, now you know why. Again, front suspension, you can't mess with these front suspensions. People do like doing wheelies on these, so I'll explain about that in a minute. Not a bad tyre. Twin bulbs at the front, missing bulb. There's your horn. Nice dashes, NRG the same. This has got brake levers. Petrol in here. 2T under the seat, which is here. On the air boxes, 2T is under here. See the bottle there, full of 2T. We all know where the speed fight goes. Under the seat that I can't get up yet. That's a horrible looking exhaust, isn't it? Oh dog. This is a horrible looking exhaust. You know, you need to upgrade this exhaust to get a good bit of speed. Again, statical, all in the same places. That is a nice back tire. Carburetor, bit hard to get to on this one. Of course, you go in this way. Oh, inline fuel filter, how nice. And there's your head. Battery at the back. That's been smashed a little bit, hasn't it? Where the battery goes in the speed fight. And the fuse under there. And on the air rocks. Ugh, it goes in there. With a 2 to Not much in the bucket here. Oh, pair of headphones. The carburetor is normally here. And the air filter comes out this way. The air rocks, you can get away with putting one of those sponge filters because it normally sits under here with the fairing. On the speed fight, it sits here. Don't do it. Water, problems, yeah, never start. And the runner, put an inline filter, I always suggest that. Again, with the variator system, it's the same, different bolts, but variator, clutch, belt, you can't really get it wrong. Single suspension on the rear again. As I said, these are fast bikes, and they go really, really well. Missing a little clear lens. In fact, all of these bikes, this, that one, and that one, oh, they all need help. So there's your look at the three bikes. Although a lot of my videos are primarily speed fight, and the next, I suppose, the air boxes, the basics, as you see, are all still the same. Carburetor, CDI, clutch, variator system, head, and so on. So, what goes wrong with them? My top tips not to do. Put crappy, cheap, 199 rubbishy oil, not just this brand. Use quality 2T oil in your bike. Always keep it topped up, don't ever run it dry. And you see the piston a little while ago, this is what causes it, scoring. Yes, the piston can be old, and it might have done 10, 15,000 miles, that's not your fault. But when you use cheap oil, and you're flogging it to death, piston failure. Next, servicing. Regularly change a spark plug, clean, wash, or change your air filter. They're not a lot of money, it'll keep your bike serviced, it'll run a lot better. If you've bought the bike as an on-runner, I don't want to say don't believe the person bought it from, I never have. Um, strip the damn thing down. Carburetor, you've got to worry about the piston, all the other little bits and bobs. Um, sometimes I said on project video, and I said I've got videos of these, project video, tuning video, exhaust video, carburetor, coil, you name it, I've got videos for them. Front end videos, why does it twist? Look at me go down the road on one wheel. Yeah, you're not clever. No, you're not clever. Do you realise, when you come smashing down on the floor, that this single arm suspension on here will twist backwards, left, right, MOT failure. This is why when you ride down the road, you're just turning left or turning right. Don't do it. And when you come crashing down on the floor, this is what cracks all this, cracks the fairings, damages the bike. It's not clever. They've got two wheels, it's not a unicycle. Keep it on the floor. It may look good in front of your mates, but it doesn't do your bike any good whatsoever. So don't do it. On the speed fights, as I said, your wheel would end up this way, or that way, or pushed back. On the air boxes, just damages the suspension. <clears throat> Again, the headstock I've spoke about, this is where you get the wobbling back and forwards and it smashes the fairing parts and can do lots of other damage as well. Not alone that, it's illegal. 
So if you're five seconds of fame, you could even end up losing your license. Yay, look at me. Dramatic for effect. What's the next thing you do? Now, if you watch my recent video, this can happen to anybody. And at some stage, or heavy, at some stage in your bike career, you're gonna fall off your bike. Don't just think you're gonna pick it back up again and ride down the road. I did it on my last video, you can see, in Yarmouth Seafront. I left this lock on, I ended up on the floor. So it can happen to anybody. This is where you damage the panels. You can damage lots of things while you're on the floor. Firstly, pick yourself up. Get the bike up, move it sort of off the road, on the path that you can, and put on the stand and leave it. When the bike's like this, the carburetor will generally drain all the petrol out of it. Big bikes doesn't happen that way, it can. Look at the scratches, beat yourself up a little bit, and then kick start the bike over. She starts fine, sometimes the carburetor is emptied, you may need to open the throttle while kicking it. Try to let you start, you may kill the battery. As long as you get it started. Get it started, have a good look around the bike, make sure the light indicators are all working, the bars aren't twisted, and again, you're okay. You can go into shock, you know, small cuts. I always wear levers or Kevlar jeans, and I wear jackets, gloves, and a helmet and boots. I know you don't wear these on these peds, but it really will help if you wore some protection. But these jeans, stuff like that, milliseconds on the floor and a cut can hurt and last a long time and even scar so top tips don't fall over the bike has been over you get it home check it over again bring it to a garage some people worry about it check it over yourself i've got a video of what to do after an accident it's on here as well i often wash the bike when you wash the bike you're washing all the parts so you then find out that this is loose that it's been pushed under you hit the curb you've damaged it so worth a watch there is something, the air rocks, the speed fight, and the Jalera in the background have got in common. They're two T's, which means they mix oil and petrol together. What's the difference between 2T and 4T? Most of you know, but let's look at the facts. 4T, reliable, go well to 30 miles an hour, if I'm honest, 50 cc's. They're generally restricted quite badly. There's not a lot you can do to them, but they are reliable, dependable and they'll work, but you're not gonna get much fun out of them. And look a bit boring sometimes. Two T's, a lot more fun. You can do so much more to them, and they go wrong so much more. And that's the truth. You have to decide between a lot of fun, speed, well, it's answered down question, isn't it? Jalera, brilliant bike, Aerox, speed fight. They do go wrong, but you can have much more fun, much more speed. I've had 55 out of an Aerox, I've had 55 out of a Speed Fight, and I've had even more out of a Jalera Runner. They're a bit unsung they are really, and they hold their money a lot as well. Cheaper the bike, you know, you get these Wang Chang Fong Suzuki Yimis, or whatever they're called, Lex Moto, stuff like that, four T's. You take care of them, WD them and regularly service them, they'll keep going, but you're not gonna get mega speed. With these ones here, you get more speed. For the last time, 70 kits don't do it i'm sure there's people out there will say to me mark i've done my 70 kits lasted ages but not from what i've seen sorry about the mic why i'm just trying to make sure you hear me better but the 70 kits i don't like them and i've done a video for them and i still get people asking well mark what is the best one i don't know i don't like them how do i tune them in really hard you've got to mess around with the tuning oil mixing because remember your pump is set up for 50 cc and it's really set up for 30, 40 mile an hour. When you do 50, 60 of these ones, I always suggest you add a little bit of 2T oil in with your petrol. When you've got a 70 kit, hey, it just makes sense you've got to do it as well. You have to up the plug. If it's a BR8, you've got a BR9 because it's more temperature, cooler, hotter, up and down the numbers. People don't do that either. You need more air in, you need to up jet. Lots of problems, more gases out, more petrol in, more air in. That's why I stick to 50 cc's. You can make these ones go really, really fast. So why bother doing a 70 kit? So to finalise, I've got 30 videos on the Aerox, I reckon, about the carburetor, um, change ignition, variator system, headstock. Headstock's the same in all of them. Watch the speed fight videos, and that'll give you a generic of where everything is. I mean, come on, look. Here's the headstock on this bike, and it's the same place on this one. You know, headstock's a headstock. 
Um, that's the little bearings, twist it. You can't over tighten it, you can't under tighten it, it'll fail the MOT. And now the new MOT laws, not really affecting motorbikes so much, but all your dash lights have got to work here in the UK, um, you know, your indicator bulbs, which sometimes people rip these up, and that's why they do that. So why are these bikes all in my shed? Well, do you know what? These are no good whatsoever, except for parts. Great tires, brakes, suspension, clocks, mirrors, you name it, as I've said before, a bike is never dead, never. But these are great for spares, and that's all these are for now. Free bikes for spares. As I said before about these Gileo runners, these are big, big bikes. They do go well. Um, the Airbox is only a one-person bike. The Speed Fight, realistically, you can get two on, but not in England, so much as an L-plate. But this was made for a lot bigger bike, wasn't it? And bigger tank as well. All in, I hope my video has been useful today to explain what to do, what not to do, and to watch my videos. I keep saying it, and I know I do, but you can't get all my videos on the phone. You have to go on a computer, and I've got 360 odd videos, but 150 on peds. Well worth a watch of them. Don't email me saying you've seen them all and ask me the same question I've done a video on. That's what happens. I've watched all your videos, Mark, and I can't get it to start. And same as when people, if you look for the comments as well, that would really help. Message me with a comment on the video you're asking about. Because um, I do a, a BMW video and the first words are, my ped won't start. <laughs> it's a BMW video. Go back to the ped video that you're talking about. And then I can say, actually, the reason why you don't know is because you're watching the wrong ped video anyway. Once again, stay with me, ped people. And big bikes and cars. Up and coming videos. What is not to like about an Audi S1? the aggressive styling and if you like peds and motorbikes you can't help but like the size of that wheel can't help but like twin exhausts oh yes vented roof spoilers Dickles. I'll stop okay there's a video of this coming up and even if you like ped videos you cannot help but love a Suzuki GSX-R K5 with an exhaust to die for. The size of this pipe here is massive compared to the original. It's there. This is a beautiful bike, and I'm gonna actually do, for once, a helmet cam video. See me hammering, I mean riding sensibly along. This sounds awesome. So does that. I really hope this video has been helpful. Know what not to do, how to get your bike on the road, the differences, and my up and coming videos. So, for me and Dementia Dog, 14 and a half, bless her. Keep liking, sharing, and subscribing. Stay with me, and I'll keep making quality videos, hopefully, a lot better than my early ones. And I do apologize if you are going to go back to some of my early videos, you realize that I was just fixing them with a camera rather than actually making a, a video out of it for you guys to watch. Say goodbye. Best I'm going to get. Take care of yourselves on the road.